In this micro nugget, we're going to take a look at the setup, the basic setup of adaptive security appliance interfaces. We really can't do such a thing without getting into a discussion of security levels as well. So we'll take a look at that and we'll test all of this at the command line. In this demonstration, by the way, we'll be using GNS3 to emulate our ASA and the routers in our scenario. Let's jump in. Now, as I said, we'll use GNS3 for our demonstration purposes, and I'll go to my open a project button here, and I have a single ASA with two DMZ topology that'll do nicely for us. We're not actually going to use the DMZs in this demonstration, but this topology does give us a nice inside and outside configuration on the adaptive security appliance. Let me go ahead and start all of these goodies in GNS3. And then we'll go ahead over and we'll start on the inside interface. And we look at that and let's expand the ASA here. We can see the E1 interface on the ASA is connected to switch one, which is connected to R1. This is what I'm pretending is the inside. Let's go to the R1 device and bring up its console. And let's see, here is the console for the R1 device. There we go. Let's go ahead and do a show IP interface brief, and we can see that the R1 device has the IP address 10, 10, 10, 1. Awesome. So we can go to the ASA's console now, and we are going to configure the gigabit one interface for this subnet. So we'll go into global configuration mode, and I'll say interface gigabit one, and we'll say IP address 10, 10, 10, 100 for the ASA. So the router in that subnet is dot one, the adaptive security appliance is dot 100. What else do we need to do to initialize an ASA's interface? Well, we need to name it with the name if command, and this is our inside interface. When you name an interface inside, this is actually a reserved name in the Adaptive Security Appliance Operating System. It recognizes this name as reserved and sets the security level as high as possible for the inside interface. That's 100. You see, the... Uh, the security level of 100 is indeed as high as possible and the lowest possible security level for interfaces that are connected to things we don't trust like the internet is zero. Now, can an interface with level 100 access stuff that's in the zero level? Yes, it can. And I always like to think of the analogy of water. Water can flow downhill from a higher security level to a lower security level. So this access is indeed permitted. Can water flow uphill? No, it cannot by default. So a secu lower security level can't access a higher security level. What about two security levels at the same level. So let's say we have a DMZ at security level 50 and a DMZ at security level 50. Can water flow, you know, side to side on the same level? No, it cannot by default. So by default, these areas could not access each other. This water analogy, I think, will really help you when you are working with security levels on your adaptive security appliance interfaces. Okay, so now what are we up to? We've got this interface addressed and we've got it named, I guess one thing that's left to do is to no shut it. So this interface should be ready to go. It possesses an IP address, a name, a security level, and it's no shut. Let's test this. We can ping from the ASA to the 10, 10, 10, one router. That's our one. And we can see that, yes, this interface is in great shape. Next up, we have the outside interface. R2 is sitting out here on the outside world. Let's bring up a console to R2. Let's look at its IP address space. It is in, whoops, show IP interface brief. There we go. It is in 192.168.11. Okay, cool. Let's put the ASA in the dot 100 there. So we will bring up the console to the ASA. 
we will go to the gigabit zero interface, which is connected to that outside device. We'll say IP address 192.168.1.100. We will say name interface outside. Any other name other than inside is going to get a zero security level by default. And we'll say no shut. Can this interface communicate? with the device that's out there. Yes, it can. So now the outside interface on the ASA is properly configured. We can do show interface IP brief on the ASA. Show interface IP brief, if we type it right. And there we go. We can see the gigabit zero at 192.168.1.100 connected to the outside world and our inside interface. Now, let's test these security levels to wrap up this micro nugget. In order to test, Telnet is a great thing. It's inspected by default. It's a great way to play with the security levels when you're testing things out. So here on R1, let's put a default route. This is the inside device. And let's say, okay, R1, when you're going to get anywhere, send it to your adaptive security appliance, that traffic. And by the way, let's set you up for Telnet. So we'll say password Cisco and login. Let's go and do the same thing to R2. R2, we're going to say, okay, R2, when you want to get anywhere, uh, we're going to give you a static route. And we're going to point to your adaptive security appliance. There we go. And what did I do wrong there? Uh, oh, <laughs> that's our address. How about dot .100? There we go. And let's set your Telnet up. Password of Cisco and check that password at login. Okay, there we go. Now, based on what we said about security levels here, the inside should be able to Telnet to the outside because this is a higher security level going to a lower security level and water can indeed flow downhill. <laughs> so let's go ahead and Telnet to 192.168.1.1. We are Telnetting from the inside to the outside world. And look at this, it worked great. Now, is it actually being inspected by the adaptive security appliance? Well, I don't know. Let's do a show connection on the ASA. <gasps> look at this, it is indeed being inspected by the ASA. TCP outside, uh, we have 192.168.123. The inside device is 10.10.10.1 10, 10, 10, with a randomized port number as the source. It's been idle for eight seconds, and this is the number of bytes transmitted, and there's some flags here. UIO, University of Iowa? What, what is that? If we do a show connection detail, we see the decode here. The uppercase U indicates that this connection is up. The uppercase I indicates that we have inbound data. The uppercase O indicates we have outbound data. Pretty cool. So this is indeed being inspected and permitted by the adaptive security appliance. Let me go ahead and break that Telnet session. Just disconnect it. Now, can the outside world Telnet to the inside world? Well, I'm thinking based on our discussion of security levels, water can't flow uphill. That should not be permitted. If it is, we got a big problem with our adaptive security appliance. So we're going to go to the outside device and we're going to Telnet to the inside device. You know what? Before we do this, though, let's go to the ASA and let's make sure the ASA is indeed the device that's blocking this. I'm going to go in and I'm going to say logging enable. Let's turn on logging and let's log things to the console. Let's log everything to the console. And there we can see it just showed us that we redid that logging configuration. Uh, by giving us a console command. So we'll clear this off now. Okay, and now that we've turned on logging with logging enable and logged everything to the console, let's now go out to the R2 device and try and telnet to the inside world at 10, 10, 10, 1. Here we go. So we attempt to telnet. 
Look at this, it's not working. If we go over to our adaptive security appliance, we can see the log messages. Inbound TCP connection denied. It's coming from 192.168.11, the randomized port 23666. Ooh, what an evil port. And it's trying to go to 10.10.10.1, port 23. There's a SYN flag set. Yep, it's trying to do the SYN TCP connection. And this is absolutely being denied as we would expect it to be by our adaptive security appliance. So in this micro nugget, we took a look at the initialization of interfaces on the adaptive security appliance, and we went a long way towards mastering security levels, where we saw the higher security level of 100, in this case, the inside interface, able to communicate to the outside world that higher to lower access permitted, and we saw the lower zero trying to access the higher security interface of 100, and we saw that denied here on the adaptive security appliance. I sure hope this micro nugget has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.